it wasn't the idea of the scene, you know, playing the scene that, that became, you know, what you went for. It was letting go of it in a way. Right, throwing it away. Yes. Doing all throw, the work yeah. and then you throw it away and yeah. let the magic come in. That's yeah. what he would stress. Let me introduce you to Susie Lonergan, who is a dancer, an actress, a choreographer, a Pilates specialist, incredible teacher, and a wonderful, wonderful wildlife photographer. I'm so proud of her. You started out as a dancer. Mm -hmm. How old were you? Three. Get out of here. <laughs> My parents thought that I was really clumsy, and so they put me in ballet school. And then I kind of stopped for like a year. And then... How old were you when you stopped? Probably like four five or six okay. and then at seven my best friend in first grade uh was taking ballet so i so i wanted to take ballet again and so that was that and i never stopped after that that was the first time i went on stage was at seven i was a baby bluebird in the bluebird at the pasadena civic <laughs> and i still remember the choreography <laughs> Dude, i'm not kidding and um we were a regional company so we would perform at least twice a year, uh, which was an amazing thing to be on stage at the Pasadena Civic from the age of seven to, you know, to 17, because that's when I, I stopped my ballet career. And that's when I went to Hollywood and got my first gig in Hollywood. So I was still in high school, I think, when I first got, when I first started working. And now you worked with Vincent Patterson, who was oh, also your best friend. That was later. How did you meet Vincent? and Jackie and Bill, who were your mentors. Did you meet them all about the same time? Like right around when I was 14, my older sister mentor, I will say. She wasn't my sister, but she was my first kind of real mentor. She had gotten sick with cancer, and so I took over teaching her class at my ballet studio. When she came back, she said, you know what, you taught so amazing and you're so good at this because I was teaching jazz class. And the music for jazz just, you know, just spoke to me and just the movement and everything. So she started taking me to Hollywood when I was 14. My first dance teacher was Claude Thompson. What studio was he teaching? So he was at the Coronet Studio. He was one of the great choreographers at the time. So I walk in, to, and I'm 14, and it is all the working dancers of LA. Gay, black, and Hispanic, Asian, and lesbians. And it was like the most electric energy I had ever walked into. It was just, I was in love. I mean, that was it. It was like a religious experience, truly. And that was just the walking into the room <laughs> part. <laughs> Right? Michelle Simmons was there, Jerry Grimes, and Tony White, and Steve Tutt, and I mean, just the greatest dancers of that era, and it was an amazing era. And so... And this was the 70s. This was the 70s. This was 1974, mm. maybe 73. So, you know, then you would, you know, stand in the back if you weren't, you know, if, you, if, if you didn't, you know, if you weren't one of the divas, which I was not. And, you know, there was a hierarchy and today I kind of feel like that's a little bit lost, like you might be a diva a little too young, you know, but you really had to work your way to the front of the class. And so I stood in back and Dana looked at me like, okay, just follow me, you know, and then Claude, and who which was is- Dana, the assistant? Dana, no, Dana was my mentor. Oh, okay. She was the one the, who had, had cancer, yes. right. And so she brought me Tuesdays and Thursdays at night, this class started wow. at 8.30 at night, so that, my parents totally trusted what was going, I mean, it was great. So the end of that class, Jerry Grimes said, how old are you? And I said, 14. He goes, well, you're gonna be something. <laughs> and I don't think I slept, you know, like for a week after that, because this man was gorgeous, Jerry Grimes, and his, boyfriend Tony White was just I mean they were like two of the most beautiful people I'd ever seen in my life so yeah that was my kind of intro into Hollywood and you know one mentor after another came into my life Jackie and Bill and so it was in Jackie and Bill's class 
that Vincent had come from Tucson, Arizona, and Vincent didn't know anybody, and I was really his first friend wow. in L.A., and so we were... And I, Vincent Patterson has become a great choreographer yes. and a director, and he did a lot of the Michael Jackson... Oh, he was uh, Michael Jackson and Madonna's yes. choreographers, and I mean, the list is beyond, I mean, it's endless. He's in the Beat It video, he's the, the blonde guy. Yes, yeah, the, in the, the knife fight, yeah, with, with Michael, Michael Peters, Peters who, who is also our mentor, mentor. Yes. yeah, together. So, and Michael Peters directed, I mean, a choreographed the Five Heartbeats. Right, and he was my To Serve With Love. <laughs> that was really, that was Michael. <laughs> he was really the one that just changed everything. Another, another level inside me as a dancer. I worked with him. I worked with, and I did a ton of co uh, commercials with Vincent and a ballet. And that's when Danny and I met was when we were filming that ballet, Threnody, that he had choreographed for the, um... Uh, choreography awards. Joe Pitka had been in the audience for the choreography awards and he saw this ballet and he was crying. Joe is like six and a half feet tall with hair down to here and every other word is F, the F word and he you know so he thought it was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen so he was at the top of the field of commercial directors oh, okay. like he did the aha commercials with the pepsi girls mm -hmm. and ray charles and we did tons of pepsi doritos and on and on and on and on you know lots of lots of commercials i mean now you're a dancer in in la you're working you're you're uh, being very professional and now you come into roy london's class Vincent said, you really got to take from this guy, Roy London. It's in his living room, and they're starting a second class. So I walk into this room, and there she <laughs> is. <laughs> and she was like, sir, you were, you were kind of shy at first. I was very reserved. I was very yeah, quiet. You, I had you my glasses quiet. I had my pigtails. Right, she had your pigtails. And I had just been working with the LA Knockers, you know, like in Japan and wherever, and you know, in this cabaret troupe. This, you this, had your hair. I had my hair like <laughs> spiked up, like in like a pebbles thing. And Roy puts us together, and that was it. That was it. I think we were very, um, and, and I, I might be biased, but I think we were so fortunate to study under Roy. What were three things that you got? from being in Roy's class. I remember understanding that my idea of a scene was not the scene. Like what I imagined it to be was not the scene. He could break you. And he, and would you, break and you. he did. <laughs> he broke me and I would I just remember standing there crying like hysterically and then he calls me the next day and says are you okay and I'm like yeah but I'm totally humiliated he right. would just watch you he would give you little notes and then in the third month he would go in deep almost everybody cried oh yeah more and than once yes yeah when my turn came <laughs> He just went in on me and he would like, he got like a rabbit dog and I'm just still looking. He says, you're not going to do anything? You're just going to look at me. <laughs> and he was like, I don't want you to come back to this class. I I'm like, you ain't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And then I remember getting in my car and I cried like a baby. But Aww. I was determined he was not going to see me cry. Then I came back the next week and then I did my scene. Wow. I had taken all the notes and then he said, it's about time. And it was different. And absolutely. So that was one. He could break, you he know, break he, you know, and you had to get to that place of vulnerability and really Which is what, what he wanted. Yes. And what are the doings? You. The doings is like was one of the most important things I remember Roy teaching us was you have to have doings and even if it's, you know, one little thing that you're, you know, looking at, it's whatever. That was a phenomenal uh, right. pearl of wisdom and you had to do your work you had to know where the beats were you had to know where the um, you know what did you want yeah. and how do you win make a choices scene. really taking the time in a scene starting with the first beat 
you know, not playing the whole scene, but just play your first beat when you're, when you start, because you can't play the whole scene. You can only play that first beat, you know, but to have done your work, I mean, right. your work had to be filled. And that was the thing about Roy. He would find, he would zero in and find that spot where you would become vulnerable and then he would find his way in and you would feel what it felt like to be real in a scene. And that was magic. And so it wasn't the scene, it wasn't the idea of the scene, you know, playing the scene that, that became, you know, what you went for. It was letting go of it in a way. Right, throwing it away. Doing yes. all throw, the work yeah. and then you throw it away and yeah. let the magic come in. That's yeah. what he would stress. Throw it away. Now, you, now you've done all your work. Yeah, get it now out of your throw head. Throw it away and have fun. And put it into your body. Yes. Yeah. And, and make, be present. And be present. Don't telegraph, oh, I'm going to get ready to do this next. Mm -hmm. That comes when, as an actor, you want to get to your next line. Right. Instead of waiting. Uh, and listening. It's you kind of like a relationship. It, it is. <laughs> Are you taking in what the person has just said to you? And how they say it to you is always going to be different. You know, yes. you have to hear it different. And I think the greatest thing that I got from him, all, putting all that together and then being able to direct myself when I would go um, to do a, a, a TV show or a movie and maybe the director would did not really care about me. They were more focused on the lead actor yeah. or or just, you know, getting Time. the shot before lunch or whatever. You know when you're on and you know when you're off. If you um, shoot something and you feel like you were off and they're going to shoot it again, okay, where do I need to be on here? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, work it for yourself. I found that to help a lot because I, I think what I learned with Roy was if you do your work well then you only need one take even if the actor working alongside of you was not giving um, you anything. technical mm -hmm. that by you just zooming in and wanting stuff from them made right. them go and one of the first things that I learned uh, and I was able to use is that Roy would say get something from them and I remember um, doing a, a, a movie with Marsha Mason and nice. I was so excited about working with her. And when we started doing, it was a scene with she and I, and she didn't look at me. And so I just stopped. <laughs> I was like, I want her girl. to look at me. That girl. And she I, did. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> she looked at me like, did you, you forget your life? And then I went in, you know. <laughs> and, there were, and there were many times that it, um, just in the audition, I booked the job because of the tools that I had gotten from Roy. Oh, yeah. And I used to carry 12 little um, points Roy, with me. Roy yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which were very similar to what Ivana Chubbuck has in her book, The Power of Acting. Oh, sure. It, 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 because she came, you know, from, from Roy. Roy. But, that was in but, Vincent's But class. I had like a little, a little yellow uh, card and I had my 12 points. And so every time I went to an audition, I would take out that card, mm -hmm. I would go through it, I would fill in my, my, my beats and do whatever and go, okay, if I just hit four of these points in this audition, I've won. Yeah, really. And, and so yeah. Roy was very, um, he gave so many tools. And we were so lucky because we, we got him in the beginning. Yes. And then he became this big, famous yes. teacher, you know, for Sharon Stone, yes. Brad Pitt, um, Juliet Lewis, you know, Gary all. Shandling, Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis, and right, the list goes right, on and right, on and right, on and on. on. And, on. Yeah. and I remember when Roy turned to us one day and he said, <laughs> How does it feel to be the queen bee? And yeah, we were so excited. excited. We had come through so much, but we. We yes, felt it. Yes. It was like, you know, like in a relationship. Well, you we know, earned the right, like you totally. said, to, to move from the back the of back the line to the front. front. And we knew our worth. Yes. And we knew, we, yes. we we understood it in a way that was integrated into our into our being. You know, it was such a, it was such an incredible moment. It you was. know, it was, and we did, we killed it when we'd get up yes. there. Every time. Yes. And we would do great, uh, well, I just say we were great. <laughs> we <laughs> but did we, sitcoms, we, but we did a lot of sitcoms, stuff yeah. that uh, really wasn't uh, part of the class. You know, he would, he would assign a lot of plays, but we would bring in Laverne and Shirley, yes. or we would find a play that was, 
comedic mm -hmm. and then we would load it up with with doings doings oh my god hannah and her sisters we yes. did all the we yes. did all the woody allen movies uh, those were really... mother's day was it mother's day me you and elise cutter yeah elise oh cutter. my god yes <laughs> <laughs> we did uh, no we it yes was, we really you know and the other thing that i loved learning in roy's class was when you were really doing your work how your face changed when I'm looking at actors, I can always tell when they're really doing their work because their face changes and it radiates. Yeah. You know, and it always stays with me. And the other, the last thing that I'll, I'll say about, about, I could go on with my <laughs> Roy forever. <laughs> yes, we but, could. But uh, he used to say, um, when you're watching TV, turn down the sound and watch. And, and it will, t and that will tell you if they're telling the truth. It's through the eyes, it's the through body. the body, and it's just their being. You're absolutely right. Yeah. We love you, Roy. We love, we love you, Roy. So oh, my yes. God.